Hey folks, Josh Dam here coming at you live to give you some more information about my latest instrument here. A couple people were asking that I do a more detailed show and tell about the functions and the technicals, so here we are. And if you're looking to make your own or have a gander at the code, I've got all that on my GitHub page. Links are down below. Below? Whatever. I was mainly inspired by the hurdy-gurdy before building this instrument, so I wanted to echo some of the main features of that which is to say uh, drone strings, harmonic strings, and of course the crank feature. I've been really interested lately in coming up with ideas on how to make sense more expressive by using bodily movements, kind of like uh, an anti-generative approach, I guess? Post-generative? What do I know? Anyway, let's get a new sum. So this thing is made out of a combination of 3D printed parts and some plywood that I had laying around. I broke the sides apart into four pieces so that it should fit on most standard size print beds. If you have a bigger printer, you might be able to fit the top and bottom plates on there as well, but I just couldn't fit it on my Prusa Mark II. I also have full size drawings on my GitHub that can be used as a template so you can cut out by hand. Now there's 15 potentiometers here, just cheapos from eBay, an optical encoder also from eBay. Uh, the crank arm right here is made from a 3D printed lever with a knob that I took from an old dresser. And the power and audio jacks are just things I buy in bulk from wherever on the internet. Now the uh, touch plates here are my own custom design. I had these done at a board house. Uh, some folks might be asking why I didn't include this design in the GitHub, and that's because I messed up the design file somehow. I ran a ULP to copy the traces to the T-stop layer, and I guess that didn't translate, so I had to sand them down to get the traces exposed. They all came like this. So I had to uh, sand them down and break them apart by hand. So if you're gonna build your own touch plates for this project, I think Adafruit recommends you just use anything that's conductive and about as big as your finger. Maybe some of uh, 3M copper tape would work just fine. Anything you got lying around, really. Right, so in case you wanna have a look at how this uh, configuration is done up inside of the Teensy, I've also included a picture of the GUI block diagram thing in the GitHub page if you want to have a look at that. But the way this all goes together is that there's 12 oscillators that each have their own envelope triggered by these touch plates. And so these three touch plates are set up as uh, drone strings. So that is a toggle function. <laughs> And then the, all the other nine are momentary strings, so they're only active while you're touching them. And you can see that the pattern of the knobs kind of mirrors that of the touch plates. So each one of those controls its own corresponding oscillator. Then all 12 oscillators get mixed together and go through one master filter, which has its cutoff frequency controlled by the crank. I tested out a version of this where I used crank speed for just amplification, but I didn't think that was as expressive. And if you listen closely to real in string instruments, they gain harmonic content the harder you play them, so I thought that was still somewhat realistic. After the filter, the mixed oscillators go through a digital amplifier which is set by this knob. The gain is set by this knob. And then we go out through the audio jack. The other controls that we have over here are for the resonance of the master filter. And then we also have a master envelope control. So the more clockwise this knob is turned, the longer the attack and release times of all of the touch envelopes. And then flipping this switch ignores the input of the crank and sets the filter wide open. This is intended as more of like a tuning mode so that you can use your cranking hand to adjust the tuning while you touch the envelope.
And this switch changes the oscillator shapes between square and sawtooth. So this project was done using a Teensy 3.2 for all of the synthesis and control functions with the Teensy Audio Shield handling the DAC and the output amplification. I used a CMOS 4067 multiplexer to simplify the routing for the pots and the touch plates all go through an Adafruit MPR121 breakout board which communicates with the Teensy over I2C. Uh, now, most of this stuff I got from places like eBay, Amazon, etc. So if you're going to build one of these yourself, just use whatever you can get conveniently. That being said, if you want to use this design for the faceplate, you certainly can. But I would highly suggest that you cut out the outline using the template on the GitHub and drill your holes mainly based on the size of the parts that you have. Don't go off my design unless you measure your parts first. And while we're on the subject of not taking my word for it, I know folks are going to ask me why I didn't include a schematic in the GitHub. Well, I didn't build this thing in a vacuum. I took heavy inspiration from my old pal David Noakes and Volts. This project uses the exact same schematic as his Teensy Synthesizer project does. The only addition is, of course, the MPR121 that's hooked into the I2C ports. So if this project really interests you, I say go watch some Notes and Volts videos to get you the basics. Have a look at the code in my GitHub so that you know what you're getting into. And build your own version. This schematic is so versatile that you can build just about anything you want with it. And at the end, it'll be your own instrument exactly the way that you want it to be. Even if you just reconfigure the code a little, it can be a drone machine. You can have different wave shapes. You can change what all these knobs do. Experiment. Make it yours. And if you do decide to build your own version, let me know. I'm always interested to see what the community can do with this kind of setup. Well, I think that's most of the cool parts about this instrument. I've got some more ideas for projects coming up. I really want to take this crank control idea and turn it into a standalone Eurorack module with a gate and velocity CV output. I think that'll really open things up to interesting use cases for what this can do. The response to the last video is really great. I got to have some fun chats with some of my fellow DIYers, and that's what I'm really all about. So I guess as long as folks find these projects interesting, I'll keep picking the camera up. So until next time, keep on noodling.